He was the best and the brightest, the symbol of a nation, the greatest hero this country has ever known. Today on the Comic Book Report, Captain America Operation Rebirth. Stick around and check it out. Greetings everyone, my name is Dominic and you're watching The Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. Today we'll be taking a look at a Captain America book straight out of the 90s, Captain America Operation Rebirth. But before we do, a few quick facts about today's collection. Captain America Operation Rebirth was written by Mark Wade and penciled by Ron Garney. The issues collected in this volume were published by Marvel Comics in 1995 and 1996. The Marvel Premiere Classics Edition I have today collects Captain America issues 444 through 448 and issues 450 through 454. And this hardcover volume comes in at 264 pages. Before we continue any further, I just want to issue a brief spoiler warning. I will be flipping through today's collection as well as commenting on plot points. You've been warned. Alright, and here's a look at today's collection. As I mentioned, this is a Marvel Premiere Classics hardcover. You'd see a lot of these back in the early aughts and early 2010s, I would say. And they're pretty good little books. You can still find them used, some for fairly affordably. I believe this one came out in about 2011, and I'm sure I picked it up thereabouts. The dust jacket is not quite as pristine as it once was, but overall the collection still really holds up. Let's go ahead and take a look under the dust jacket. We got some nice baby blue inside cover pages, and then on the hardcover itself, it's that nice faux leather kind of finish with some great lettering here. It's just really well constructed, and it's a pretty dense little hardcover book. And while it is standard size, it has really glossy, nice paper stock. I think it's a little bit heavier than the paper stock you see in a lot of their hardcovers today. Get a look at the creators right here, and then we go ahead and dive into the issues themselves. I love that they reproduce the covers. That's always a nice touch in these collected editions that I really appreciate. As we go through, I'd like to give a little context of how I encountered this collection. As I mentioned, I bought it probably a decade ago. And I'll be honest, I'm a kind of middle-of-the-road Captain America fan. I've read some of his early Silver Age stuff, both on his own and, of course, with the Avengers. And I've pretty much read all of the Ed Brubaker run, which is fantastic, by the way. But beyond that, I haven't read a ton of Captain America solo adventures, if I'm honest. And even having this collection for almost a decade, I've actually never read it. I know, I know, you have to read what you buy. So here I am. And not without some trepidation. Here's a confession that hopefully doesn't alarm some of you, but I'm not a fan of 90s art, guys. Not in general. It's probably one of my least favorite decades in comic art. It's not without its exceptions for me. You know, I love Todd McFarlane and Mark Bagley and even some of Jim Lee's stuff I saw during that era. But in general, I feel like the art in the 90s just didn't really click with me. It's like borderline computerized, a little cartoony in a way I don't always love. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, but anyway, I looked through this collection when I first bought it, after I bought it, and I got a little dissuaded from actually diving in, even though I love the writer, Mark Wade. Well, fast forward a decade, and I found this book recently in my parents' garage, and I thought, hey, now's the time. And boy, was I so glad I decided to read this. This collection starts with a great issue where the Avengers have to fight off against some domestic terrorists who are demanding to see Captain America, who is presumed dead at the time. It's a pretty harrowing little issue that also really comments on the nature and person and almost symbol that Captain America is within the country in the hero community. And it ends with them effectively eulogizing him and disclosing to the world that he's presumed dead. But we see he's actually suspended, frozen in ice again. 
from there, the collection effectively revives him, superpowers him back up with a new super soldier serum blood transfusion, and pairs him up with his old paramour, Sharon Carter, and believe it or not, the Red Skull. And from there, things get pretty wild. They're searching for the Cosmic Cube, which is kind of bending reality, and is kind of a basis uh, for one of the Infinity Stones from the MCU, kind of mixed with this cube. Like I said, in here, it's not an Infinity Stone, it's just called the Cosmic Cube, but it's cool to see shades of this appear in the MCU. After that story arc concludes, you kind of fast forward a little bit and we have Captain America basically disavowed and losing his citizenship from America, courtesy of the Commander-in-Chief, because they believe he has disclosed secrets that only he really knew to terrorists and other organizations that are hoping to harm the country. From here, Steve Rogers kind of spirals into a little bit of a depression as he's kind of exiled out of America. He's kind of saved by Sharon Carter, who helps convince him to pick himself back up, right the wrongs, figure out if he was framed, how he was framed, and restore his right standing. And wow, let me tell you, there's a lot of twists and turns in this story arc, but it was so satisfying. And that really rounds out this collection, those two main story arcs. But wow, I was blown away. And I don't know why I doubted. Mark Wade is one of my favorite comic authors, and he's true to form here. His take on Captain America is hardly a new one, but it's so worthwhile. There's a lot of American ideals and optimism in this collection. There's a lot of patriotism that really work for this character. It really had me stopping and saying, hey, God bless America. This is still cool. This man loves his country, and he loves doing what's right. And I have to admit, while I don't love 90s artwork, what Ron Garney did throughout this collection really surprised me. There's a lot of action, a lot of intensity, a lot of emotion, and there's a lot of playfulness as far as the paneling and page layout goes that really kept me interested. It has me kind of reevaluating and really wanting to kind of delve further into some 90s comics. So if you have recommendations, I'd love to hear about it below. Yeah, just look at that. Beautiful. I do think a lot of these issues have been reproduced recently in an epic collection that you can find. This edition you can also still find out there on some third-party sellers or eBay or things like that for those still interested. And I think it's that time that we give this collection a grade. For two Captain America stories that still feel fresh, even coming from the 90s, that really showcase some of those ideals that Captain America really represents, even if the art is a bit of its time. The Comic Book Report has to give Captain America Operation Rebirth by Mark Wade and Ron Garney a C+. In my mind, this collection is a bit above average, but... It's not the most iconic work done for this character. I would not consider this a must read, but for any fan of the character, I would say, hey, give this a shot. You might enjoy it like I did, particularly for the right price. And while the art was tolerable to me and had some shining moments, I'm still probably never going to be a fan of comics from this decade, at least as far as the art is concerned. Of course, barring a few outliers. I would also say this is fun for MCU fans. Fans of that Marvel Cinematic Universe might recognize a very idealized Captain America, along with the Cosmic Cube, Sharon Carter, and of course the Red Skull. Have you read Operation Rebirth? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Please consider subscribing or checking out some of my other videos. And have a good one.